What I think will be much more important than cryptocurrency in the long term, and also more important than NFTs, are smart contracts. So again, here in the blockchain is a property regis a, a, a registration system of information, and I can put anything that I want in here. So I put in here a contractual information. And you can think about a smart contract like a really sophisticated vending machine. A vending machine is basically a smart contract. Once you insert $2, a drink is released. Now, if the drink only costs $1.50, you insert the $2 and then it's already pre-programmed in the algorithm. What are you gonna get back? If the vending machine has quarters, you get two quarters back. But if it only has one quarter, then it's already pre-programmed. You will get the nickels and then the dimes or whatever, or first the dimes and then the nickels. So there is no free will in there. It's basically, it's an algorithm. A contract is an algorithm. A contract is a recipe of how to do a transaction between you and me. And hence, it can be put on the blockchain. It's just information. So we put the smart contract on the blockchain. Now, some smart contract platforms, you can think about them like this. So Ethereum is actually a really amazing vending machine, like a really amazing one. But that's actually how you can think about it. Now you can put bigger things on that. For example, how do we do it nowadays with the contract? If you have a big contract, like a million dollars, you want to buy a house for a million dollars, what would you do? Well, traditionally, if you buy a house, you would give it to a trusted third party. Again, they're like the banks. They're called notaries or escrow, and you give them the million dollars, then the other one who sells the house gives them the titles and they hold it. And then you check the house and see and everything. And if everybody's in agreement and everything is fine, then the notary takes a fair percentage there and then releases it. This trusted third party, this notary, this escrow held the money for us. Now, if you do a smart contract, you don't need that. You don't need a trusted third party. You actually don't need, you don't need a lawyer to come into agreement. You just write the agreement on the blockchain. And once you click on wanting the house, your million dollars in your wallet is automatically mine and the house goes into your wallet. So it's kind of like you make a purchase on an e-commerce site. That's what it is. And then it's transacted. There's no need for a third party there. It gets automatically taken out of your account and then done there. Now, you still will need lawyers in order to quibble later on to like, oh, actually, that's not what I meant and so forth. And actually, no, no, no. I like was like, I, I misspelled that. So for that in order to execute it, I mean, the person can say, okay, you have the property of the house in your registry, but I'm still squatting here. I'm not going to leave. So the blockchain doesn't solve all of that. So it still needs a lot of institutions. It still needs a lot of trust in that sense through the social adoption and through the adaptation of social institutions, through the creation of new institutions that allows to execute that. But the blockchain provides the registration system, the database. That's basically what it does. Now, if I have property of a virtual property, then I can also put that on the blockchain. So that then, and that's why people start to buy virtual property in the metaverse, then you can do that. And you can put virtual property that just, you say like, well, this property just as an NFT, basically, you put then, you put that on the blockchain. And so this is Ethereum, I already mentioned it. Ethereum is the second biggest blockchain that we have right now. It's basically a smart contract platform. And so Bitcoin was created in 2008 and Vitalik, Buterin created, wrote the white paper of Ethereum. Also, they're both very readable. If, if you're not afraid and you enjoy these, please go ahead and read these white papers. They're very instructive and it was published in 2014. So that's how young this field is, 2008, 2014. Now, one of the things in the Ethereum white paper, which is striking and had a big impact, is that Vitalik there said, well, one of the smart contracts you can set up, for example, on the Ethereum smart contract platform is to create a new currency yourself. And that lead to, led to a proliferation of many currencies. So many, and that's actually the line of code. So it's four, if, if you're into coding, four lines of code. <laughs> and he wrote that in the, in the Ethereum white paper. And said, with these four lines of code, you create a new, he called them tokens. So in cryptocurrency, there are coins and there are tokens. So on the Ethereum blockchain, you can create other currencies and you give them different names. Matic, for example, Polygon, or whatever you want to create, a different token, and you put that, you create that on as a smart contract on the Ethereum platform, and then you have a different currency that has different characteristics, and you can do something else with that. Maybe it's a currency for gamers, and the gamers kind of like use it, and that's it's called an ERC-20 token in Ethereum lingo, and we're not going to go into the details, but that's something very cool you can do. On the, on Ethereum blockchain and on many smart contract platforms. And that's been there since the beginning, since the Ethereum white paper.